Hey guys, it's Marshall uh, back again, and we're just uh, getting to the end of setting up our persistent world. And uh, what we're going to do next is uh, we're actually finished with our tool set. Uh, again, we've made a little mock up world with some files and a hack pack and an area in it. And uh, we're going to close the tool set now because we're finished developing. We've staged it and copied all of our files up to our uh, Dropbox, and we've copied all of our server files over to the server. So we don't need our tool set anymore. The next thing we're going to um, uh, we're going to do is configure our firewall. Now, because our server and most people most people run uh, some kind of firewall at home, you're going to need to open up a, a firewall port, um, actually a couple ports, uh, to allow access in. Now there's always a few questions about what ports work, what ones you need, what ones you don't need, and uh, I've got myself a list of ports that I find that work. Um, hopefully they'll work for you too, um, but we'll see. Uh, so log into your firewall now. I'm, I, I don't, I'll, I've got a little D-link here for uh, connected to this network. Now it's, it's not even this one, I'm just going to demo on this one, but um, your firewall's may be different if you don't have a, a D-link, um, but log into your, your home firewall, and they're all basically the same, what you're looking for. Uh, what you're looking for is a thing called port forwarding. So oftentimes it's under advanced, and you know if you're running a link list, it'll be something like that too, but you don't want application rules or virtual server, you want simple straight up port forwarding. So we're just going to use port forwarding on here. Now again, this can look a little different depending on what firewall you use. So hopefully you'll be able to find some resources on the internet on how to configure your firewall. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go nwn2, this, I'm just going to name my firewall rule, and uh, the first port that I want to make sure is open is UDP 5121 and it's going to go to an IP address that is my server. So if you remember my server here, my Windows XP uh, computer, I have an IP of 192.168.10.35. Okay, that's my, this is my Windows XP's IP address. I've, I've actually hard-coded that address on this server. So on my firewall, I need to go 192.168.10.35. Now again, your IP address range could be different, um, <clears throat> but again, this is you're, you're going to have to kind of figure out your own networking at home. So uh, the first port I want to open up is 5121. Now I like to do this just because I'm weird like that. I know I don't need 5121 TCP, but I do like to keep the keep this simple. If your firewall has the ability to have multiple ports in one rule, then you're going to do what I'm about to do. If you can't, if you can only have one or just a range of ports per rule, you're going to need multiple rules for all the different ports. So the first port I need is 5121. Then I'm going to add a range of ports, which is 36582-3660. And then I'm going to add 28910. So these are my range of ports on my firewall. Now again, if you don't have the ability to do this because your firewall doesn't allow something like that, what you could do is you could call this rule nwn2 rule2 or something, and then you can have you know, your range in this one, and the same IP address, dot .35, and then have a third rule, nwn3, where you put in like the last port, 20, uh, 28, 9, 10, you put it here and here, and then the same IP address again, and then you'd save it. This particular firewall allows me to put all these different ports into one rule, so that's what I'm doing here. So then I hit save, and finish. Reboot your little firewall. I'm going to reboot later. Reboot your firewall, and you know everybody in the house will lose internet for a couple of seconds while you do that, and then you're done. Then you don't have to deal with your firewall anymore, unless you add more, more servers and things, but um, that's beyond the scope of this how-to. So that's your that's your basic firewall requirement for your Neverwinter Nights 2 that I find works really well. So that's all we need to do with our firewall. Now, as you recall, our Windows 
XP professional uh, workstation is running Windows Firewall, but we don't have to worry about that, and you'll see why in a little bit. Now, we're done with our firewall, and we're almost ready to fire up our, um, our server. But we do want to do a little bit more customization. And I actually do need that window back that I just had there in WN in our Dropbox folder, because I do want to do something else. So as you can see, um, here are the files that we copied over when we were over on our Windows 7 machine um, doing our development and our staging. The, our files are there, and the little green checkboxes means they're synchronized in Dropbox, so that's good. But we do want to create another folder here, or not another folder, sorry, another file. And this file is going to be, and, and pretty much most of this stuff is just customizations for your world. This one is going to be a little news uh, page, or a little info HTML page that we're going to actually plop on our server, and I'll show you where that gets used when we load it up in game. So what you're going to do is open up Notepad, and I created one over here that I'm just going to copy and paste in here. So this is, uh, you can use very basic HTML. You can't use a whole ton of, uh, of stuff in here to make, uh, to make this fancy, um, but it, you can put some information uh, in here that's useful for players when while they're downloading your hack pack and your areas and stuff for them to read. Updates, things that are going on, maybe your rules, um, but yeah, some basic things about your module for players to read while they're uh, transferring your files. That's what this is for. So uh, basically I just put in a title, welcome to my module, and then just some information, you know, you've connected to my module server, huge world of adventure, journey will begin shortly, you know, let them know that they got to wait. Some of the things you will find in my module include, you know, plenty of quests, rich inhabitants of story, you know, tons of dungeons, whatever you want, right? This is just, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, I've made the title a different color, so you'll see that. So what we'll do is we'll save this, and we're going to save it in our Dropbox folder. And then WN, Dropbox, and Public. And we're going to change this text documents to all files because we don't want this file to end with a TXT extension. And we're going to call it info.html. And hit save. And then close. And now we've got this info.html file in here. So we're going to use that. We're going to tell Neverwinter Night's server that we want to use that uh, in, a, in a just a moment. Now we're going to c further customize our Neverwinter Night's server for System World. Uh, so in order to do that, what we're going to do is if you remember when we were configuring NWNX, we said that some options are on the are in the parameters line in NWNX and other options are actually in NWN2 player. That's this file right here. So in our NWN installation directory, there's an NWN2 player uh, initialization file as well. Now, I'm only going to go through some of the more interesting ones, but you'll definitely want to go through some of these and look up what they do and see if they're of any use to you. Um, one of the th some of the things start that we're mostly interested in are under server options. And I'm going to go through a couple of the more interesting ones. Again, some of these like max players and server name, we're not going to configure here because what's in the NWNX parameters line overrides this. If it's not in the NWNX parameters line, it'll use whatever we have here. But if it is there, it, get, it overrides what entries are here. So we're just going to leave those. So the first one that we're going to be interested in is game type, right here. Now, if you've ever played multiplayer Neverwinter Nights 2 and you connect to the internet and you look at the game spy list, you're going to see several categories on the left. That's uh, and, and there'll be different servers in different categories. This, the, the category that your server is going to show up in is 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 derived from what you have here. Now, there's a different number for each category, um, and there's there's like 13 of them, for example. And and if you look up on the NWN2 wiki on how to set up a persistent world, you'll you'll find what each one means. Number nine means persistent world action. If I wanted it in the role play group, for example, I would change this to 3, and then my server would show up in the roleplay uh, group. If I wanted it in uh, 
persistent world story I change this to 10 if I wanted it in you know uh, oh I don't know action and you change it to zero stuff like that so for our purposes we're just gonna call it persistent world action and we're just gonna leave it at 9 so that's uh, that's what that is again you can get the entire list off of the internet uh, the next interesting one that you might want to change or keep is this one here show DM join message so when you got a couple of players playing and a DM logs in uh, every player will get a little message saying you know such and such DM just logged in you can turn that off with this option here uh, another interesting one is disallow shouting so if you want to pre prevent your users from using the shout channel uh, you can set that to one and that'll uh, turn that uh, ability off. Uh, one that you definitely want to set is your DM password. So my DM password. So that's the password that Dungeon Masters will use to connect to your server, and uh, it'll be different from the player password. Again, we don't we won't be putting a player password here because it gets it from NWNX. Uh, PVP setting again. That's another choice for your module. You can set uh, set some different options for player versus player. Again, look it up on the internet to find out what what settings mean what, um, depending on what kind of server uh, you want to have. And and we'll look down to this one here. Allow local characters. You don't want players. Well, you may want players, I don't know. Uh, if you're using a server vault, so which means <clears throat> uh, the difference between server vault and local vault. Local vault uh, means that players are allowed to create their own characters offline, uh, create their own little module, give them whatever items and, and things they want, and give them whatever level they want, and then they can log into your persistent world with that character. That's what local characters means. Server vault characters means that their characters are stored on your server and uh, they have to use the version that's on your server. They can't, you know, create their own module and level up their character and then bring that character to your world. They can't do that in a server uh, vault type environment. So if that's the environment you want, you do not want allow local characters, so you have it set to zero. If you are creating a, uh, you know, an arena type persistent world uh, that players can come into and they're allowed to bring whatever character they want at whatever level, uh, they've created it, uh, you can set this to one and they'll be able to do that. Uh, enforce legal characters, again this is just an option to uh, help uh, prevent characters with really strange uh, numbers <laughs> under character. Um, again look that one up to, to get more information on what it means. I usually have it set to zero. Uh, item level restrictions, again this is just a flavor of is set to your taste. If you want your items um, if you want powerful items not to be in the hands of low-level characters, set this to 1. If you don't care if a super high powerful weapon is in the hands of a low-level character, then set this to 0. That's what that means. Scroll down a little bit. And the next most interesting one is going to be client sync required, this one here. You definitely want to set this one to 1. You definitely want to set this one to 1. And you want to set this one to 1. What these three are is this is how your server behaves with players, um, players' installations of Neverwinter Nights. Client Sync tells your Neverwinter Nights server to check uh, the players' uh, hack pack files and uh, for your for your world and check their uh, area files for their world and make sure that they have them. And if they don't, bring them to the screen where we'll show them downloading them and transfer them. So that whole staging system that we're using, that's what turns this on. So you want to make sure that's set to 1. Disable client override. Now, if you have resources in your uh, world and a player has an override folder and they put their own version of your hack pack in there, um, they'll be able to have their own version of your hack pack. Set this to 1 as well so that they won't be able to use their overrides. Uh, same with custom UI, if they have their own UIs, you can make sure that they aren't able to use theirs as well. Now, some more information about Client Sync. Read up on this because this has the ability to examine uh, players' copies of hack pack files to make sure they weren't tampered with. One is usually good enough for most, for the most part, but you can find out a little bit more. Some people might, you know, at this point question, well, hey, you know, uh, if they've got the same hack pack, but they went in and modified it, you know, how does this know, or how does this protect my persistent world from cheats? Uh, this.
this here has the ability to examine their hack pack file and make sure it's it's the correct one but it you know there are there are you know resource requirements for that it takes time for it to do that things like that so we'll read up on that one uh, the next one is our info URL so this is the little web page that we just created uh, that we want to show to our users while they're downloading all of our hack packs and areas and things and that's what we're going to push we're going to put this in there so we're going to grab this URL by right clicking Dropbox copy public link and we're going to put that right there we're also going to remove this HTTPS because it doesn't uh, never nice doesn't do SSL uh, so that will be displayed for the players when they connect to our world and then admin email address I don't even remember what this is for but I always put it in anyway <laughs> uh, and that's it we're done again review the other options see if there's anything in there that's interesting to you that you may want to use and that is it we are now ready to fire up our server so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to NWNX we're actually not even there we're going to go to our start scripts and we're going to fire up our module uh, oh I'm going to interrupt it so I'm just going to pause real quick here I'll be right back okay sorry about that so as I was saying we're going to uh, fire up our our world so we'll double click on this and it fires up NWNX which then in turn starts our Neverwinter Nights server now this does take a while to load especially if you have a really big world um, it will take a long time for this to load up so just be patient on this screen um, if there's a problem it'll it'll complain um, very rarely well I guess I can't say that because very rarely for me does this hang now again remember I said don't worry about the firewall this is why because it'll prompt you uh, for this and you're going to want to select unblock and what that does is it automatically modifies Windows firewall for you to allow connections into your world so you just hit unblock on that and continue to wait and what you're looking for is this right here running login at will if this says anything else like idle there's something wrong if it says loading then you have to wait a little longer if it says loading for like an hour then there's something wrong what you want is running login at will once you have that you're in the good now again you're gonna see all sorts of different configuration options here you don't want to change these uh, here unless you're just testing for your world the reason is because when your world restarts or crashes for whatever reason and it comes back up it won't remember what you had in here you want to modify the nwn2 player any file or and or the nwnx any file that we did in, in previously and put your settings in there that's where all these settings by default come from like our well you know maximum level of 21 our the game type of which uh, category we're in and all that stuff our passwords and, and things like that so our server is now up and running and ready to have a player login so what we're going to do now is actually do that we're going to fire up back on our Windows 7 computer we're going to load up actually you know what I'm not even going to do that with that because I like to use the Neverwhere Nice 2 client extension this here if you don't know what this is um, look up uh, Skywing Skywings Neverwinter Nights 2 client extender uh, I think that's what's called uh, he's he's done a fantastic job modifying Neverwinter Nights to be better <laughs> than, than what it is so you definitely want to use that so we'll uh, excuse me We'll load up our uh, Neverwinter Nights game with that. And I just thought of something else. I'm actually going to stop this video here uh, because I want to use Fraps to actually uh, record the video in uh, Neverwinter Nights 2 because I don't want to use this, this tool for that. So I'm going to end this video here and the next clip I'm going to use a different recording tool um, uh, because it all the 3D stuff. So I'm going to just stop this and fire up fraps and then start and I'm just going to log into the game again. So